There we go. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. So today, what we're talking about is um, essentially how to build a course. Now, I'm not doing a PowerPoint today. Um, I've got copious notes because I've been thinking about this session for quite some time. Um, around about the beginning of lockdown last year, March 2020, um, we jumped straight on to, onto Zoom and we started doing all of these tutorials for you. One of the very early stage ones was, was how to build a practice because we were looking at ways of helping people to pivot during lockdown, you know, because we were all in the dark. Nobody knew what was going to happen with lockdown. We just assumed it might just be a, you know, a quick lockdown. And, you know, little did we know with the benefit of hindsight, we now know. Um, the upshot was obviously that, um, you know, we, all of us sort of quickly embraced Zoom. Um, we came, became sort of a, you know, accompanied, um, sorry, accustomed, I should say, to actually utilizing Zoom and being online. Um, whether it was for meetings, whether it was for seeing clients, or whether it was, was for even delivering training. Um, so we've found ways of actually pivoting to, to, to utilize these new types of technology, which maybe we weren't so familiar with. I know that we weren't. I mean, we used it every so often, but we weren't totally familiar with it, 100% familiar with it um, back in March 2020. And it was a real baptism of fire. And we, you know, obviously got ourselves uh, very used to it very, very quickly. But the reason I mention it is because, as I'm sure you know, the Complementary Medical Association has a YouTube channel. And so an adjunct to today's training is also a, a training that's already up on the CMA, the, sorry, the Complementary Medical Association YouTube channel. Um, I'll explain why I'm saying the whole name rather than the CMA. I'll tell you about that in a sec. Most of you probably know this already. Uh, but there is already a really in-depth training on how to structure a course and put it online. So I'm not going to actually be doing the structure today. Today is much more about um, asking you questions. Okay, um, so I, I, th I want today to be a, a thinking, a thinking session. So I'm going to raise questions that I know will provoke thought processes within yourselves that um, will enable you to go away and think, okay, so um, if I do this, and if I do this, and if I do this, what does that mean for my courses? Okay, can I have a show of hands and because um, we've got quite a few people in this group today. So if you can give me a thumbs up if you are already teaching a training course and keep those thumbs up while I scroll through. So are you teaching at the moment? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, great. All right, that's fantastic. If you are not teaching, give me a thumbs up. Okay, and there are some interesting folks who are neither. <laughs> so what I need to know is, um, and clearly if you put it in the chat for me at the bottom, if you are not teaching at the moment and you are not, sorry, um, so if you are teaching, so you gave me a thumbs up if you were teaching, you gave me a thumbs up if you weren't teaching, and there were some people who didn't put their thumbs up at all, so can you, ah, Alison says teaching via webinars. Oh, actually, that counts as teaching, that's fine, that's brilliant, okay. Yep, fantastic. Is there anybody else that I've sort of missed in my questions? Is there any, anybody sort of that's in that? Ah, uh, Sonny says I'm not teaching online. Okay, that's fine. So whether you're teaching real world or online, um, it still counts as teaching. So I think, um, uh, uh, yes, um, Osman is teaching in Zoom. Hello, Osman. Hi, we've been speaking so much. <laughs> um, Natasha says, oh, you're with me tomorrow, aren't you, Natasha? Hi, Osman. Hello. Um, yes, uh, Natasha uh, trained, has trained therapists in the past, but not currently teaching. That's fine. Well, you're with me tomorrow, so we're going to change all of that up aren't we okay fine all right that's brilliant okay everybody i'm just going to have a quick scroll through because uh, we've got loads of you yeah brilliant okay fantastic it was so good to see your beautiful faces this is so good right um that's absolutely terrific so here's the thing the way i see it is that if you are teaching real world or you're teaching online um, to me, the, the, the boundaries are very fluid because, you know, prior to March last year, um, 
we weren't uh, we weren't teaching um, really online that much, were we? Um, but then, of course, what we had to do was we had to sort of quickly jump ship and actually, you know, quickly get to grips with doing things online. Um, I'm going to just change the view here. So there we go. I'm going to pop myself on speaker mode because I may well, there are some, th some things that I may well want to share with you. I'm, I'm not, sh not sure at the moment, but I may just to, like screen shares possibly. Um, so the thing about um, what we had to do, which was pivoting, uh, was quite interesting. As I said earlier, it was a real baptism of fire that we had to get used to doing these things. Otherwise, we just simply wouldn't have a practice, would we? Now. There's, a, there's quite a lot of confusion about teaching online and also practicing online. And it's been quite a weird one. And I want to share this with you and I'd appreciate your comments in the chat actually. So practitioner to practitioner here. Uh, let me just let Jocelyn in, there we go. Hi, lovely Jocelyn, hi. Um, so practitioner to practitioner, I just want to ask your, your opinion on this. We at the CMA have had a few inquiries recently from practitioners who've graduated through CMA recognized training colleges. They've done online training and they are now starting to set themselves up as, as practitioners. But because they're working online with their clients, They've said, you know, we've immediately said, well, obviously, you've got to send us your certificates. You've also got to send us your proof of insurance. And we've had quite a few people come back to us and say, oh, but I'm only working online with my clients. Therefore, I don't need insurance. And I'm like, what? And so, of course, we're going back and saying, well, insurance is a condition of CMA membership. You know, this is a professional organization. You know, if you don't see the need for insurance, then maybe we're not the right organization for you. But I was wondering what your thoughts are about this. Um, are you with us? Do you do you think that it's it's got to be a prerequisite to uh, to practicing to have insurance? Um, I mean, I do. But if anybody has a different opinion, I'd, I'd love to know, uh, because, uh, you know, to me, uh, maybe, you know, we're not arrogant enough to think that we you know, have, you know, literally crossed every T and dotted every I that's ever existed. Uh, yeah, Alison says, absolutely essential. Yes, yes, and uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sonny says, yes, uh, Supi says, yes. Uh, Tracy says, integrity is important. Absolutely, Sonia says, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you see, we're all on the same page, aren't we? Yes, yes, um, Osman says, yes, absolutely. Sonia says, you must have insurance if you're a professional charging for your service. I can't see why anyone would think otherwise. Exactly. I mean, I was thinking, hang on, are we going loopy here? Is there something, are we missing something? Oh, People are going online. I mean, honestly, it does seem awfully, awfully strange. So anyway, there we go. Um, so no, we're all in the same boat. So that's great. So that's a little aside. So let's come back to today's topic. Um, let's talk about courses. Uh, there are different types of course, obviously. There are real world courses. Um, and there are pros and cons with that, obviously. Um, there are online courses, there are pros and cons with all of those as well. Um, or of course you could do a hybrid course, which is actually a mixture of all of those. Now, the thing about um, the situation that we find ourselves in the world today is I really do believe that as horrendous in every respect, and I will not minimize COVID because of, of everything that's going on politically, lifestyle wise, I mean, everything that's happening out there. Um, you know, we cannot minimize the seriousness of what's been going on on the world stage in the UK and, and further afield. Um, it's just been a disaster in, in so many respects. However, there is a, if there was a silver lining, there is a slight silver lining insofar as we have been forced to embrace technology. And what that's done is it has enabled us to actually expand our sphere of influence. And it means that, you know, you can run courses, you can see patients from all over the world now. Whereas perhaps if you were really working only face to face, either with teaching or with your practice, then you know you were very limited to a geographical area. And so, you know, I think that we will be looking at future lockdowns, whether it's to do with COVID or whether it's to do with flu, seasonal flu. Um, the last latest headline I believe is that we're all looking at boosters in the autumn. 
I'm not going to even discuss, I'm not going to go on to that because it's such a complex discussion and I've got my opinions and they're probably very much the same as your opinions. Um, so enough said. But the thing is that I do think that now they've got a very compliant society, I do think that they will be doing more lockdowns. So I feel very strongly that it's the, the emphasis at the CMA is to make sure our members have um, skill sets that enable you to take everything online as much as you possibly can. So whether it's practice or whether it's teaching, that's what we've got to get you doing. So the good thing is um, another video I would like you to watch. Now, I was telling you earlier about the Complementary Medical Association YouTube channel. When you go to YouTube, you've got to put in the whole thing. You've got to put in Complementary Medical Association. You can't put in the CMA because as I've told you before, and those of you that know me, and I do say this a lot, you'll get to the, the sorry, the Country Music Association uh, uh, YouTube channel, and you'll end up sort of, you know, just disappearing down a big black hole of fantastic country music and Dolly Parton videos and all the rest of it, which is fine, but it won't get you to where you need to be. So when you go to YouTube, you must put in Complementary Medical Association, spelling complementary with no I with two E's. Okay, remember that, very important. Um, so we've got that video that I did for you right at the beginning of lockdown, which is on how to build an online practice. That was the nitty gritty. That was showing you uh, what you need to include, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So it's an adjunct to what we're teaching today. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about was, um, Something we're going we're gonna to discuss today is passion, is, is, is your why, it's your passion for life, it's, it's uh, sort of where your, your uh, passion and your expertise intersect, okay. So I did a tutorial for you a while back on Ikigai, I-K-I-G-A-I, -I, the Japanese word that really essentially translates roughly as your reason for being, because that's what we've got to look at when we're working out what you're going to teach and how you're going to teach it. Okay, so that's another one that I, I'm going to signpost for you. And then finally, the other thing that I want to signpost for you at this point in, in the discussion is um, Rebecca, the lovely, lovely Rebecca Lockwood. Just before Christmas last year, I did an interview with the wonderful Rebecca. She's just such a lovely person. And she shared so generously about how she took her business online, her training school online. And she, because she, you know, she looked as we did, we looked at the situation as did she and thought, oh my gosh, you know, what are we gonna do here? This is a disaster uh, because she was teaching real world. She was teaching real world face-to-face -face trainings on uh, NLP and hypnosis and so on. And uh, so the lovely Rebecca thought, hmm, what are we gonna do after she cried for 24 hours, as did we. And uh, she said, right, okay, I've just gotta go bang, 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 online. She took herself online. She was expected to do to, expecting to do 60,000 pounds that year, which is, a reasonable a reasonable salary you know it's not a bad salary by any stretch of the imagination but she ended up and closed out the year uh, because she took stuff online at 260,000 okay so I'm telling you that not just to say oh wow isn't Rebecca clever yes she is but the point is she she realized that she had to pivot. She found a way of pivoting and she leveraged online. And that's what I want you to do. And that's one of the things we're really going to discuss today. Uh, because I truly believe that if, you know, if we are looking at future lockdowns, we don't know if we are, but we could be. And if that's the case, then I really do feel very, very strongly. You've got to have this string to your bow. Am I making sense? Does everybody, are we largely in alignment with that? I mean, I would always rather teach face to face, but having said that, we have got these teaching sessions pretty much down to a fine art. And actually, the, for those of you who've done the um, resilience and positive psychology training, you also know that, you know, it does work in a Zoom setting. You can get a good group energy going. So, yes, and, and thank you for your comments. Yeah, yeah, that's, yes. So, somebody says, I agree, wish I'd done it sooner. Absolutely, yeah. So going back to Rebecca, um, she's now doing her launches because she's got everything totally streamlined. She's spending a lot on Facebook ads, so we're not going to minimize that. She is spending, she's investing a lot, but she's actually doing 300,000 pound launches every time she does a launch. And she's doing, I believe she's 
she's doing three launches this year. So she's very close to the million pound mark. And we can all do this. It, she's not special and she's lovely. She's got most beautiful nature. But please go and watch that video because she tells you exactly how she did it. Exactly how she did it. She tells who her mentors were. She tells you exactly how she figured out how to spend. She tells you exactly how she built her mailing list. So please go and look at that. Also go and look at the Ali Campbell video if you weren't in that one as well. Again, Ali is also an internet millionaire running training courses, funnily enough, also in, in NLP and hypnotherapy and so on. Um, you know, these are people who are out there, they're doing it, they're real people, they're ordinary people, just like the rest of us, but they are, they've strategized, and that's what we're going to be kind of lifting the lid on today. Um, but because they teach what they do so well, I want you to go and look at what they're, they're telling us, okay? So we've got this fantastic repository of information for you. So the pros and cons, let's talk about this with the different models. Real world, of course, you can get all that lovely group energy going. You get to see people, you get to give them a big hug. You know, you, uh, you create group energy, people make friends. You know, that you, we have people sitting down having a cup of coffee and a chat and so on in the break. You know, and, and you, you create, you forge friendships and that's fantastic. And you get the back and forward and you get the banter and you get all of those wonderful things that you get when you're teaching live. Whereas of course, online is different. You know, you can, you can get the banter going. Uh, the second Second time I, I taught the resilience and positive psychology course, it was brilliant because Pete, it was a small group and they were very cheeky. And uh, I think some of you were in that group and it was hilarious. We had such a good time. But you know, it works. You can get these group energies going. So it is it is possible to do it. Um, and a hybrid course is is sort of a little bit of a mixture of both. So you know, you could teach a certain element real world, and then you could teach you know follow ups online or via a Facebook group, that sort of thing. So you know, again very difficult to plan for because you just don't know you know we are looking we always did uh, live practice development trainings um and I just don't know whether to put the money down and, and book our old venue in Kensington in the heart of London. Lovely, lovely venue. But, you know, do we put the money down at the risk of losing it if we all go back into lockdown? It's a huge decision. You know, we just aren't quite sure. We're not just not quite sure, quite there yet. So I'm, I'm happy to keep teaching online for the time being until we get clearer. So I hope that sort of I, I imagine that probably echoes your, your thoughts as well. But let me know again. And, uh, you know, we've got a smallish group today. So it's a good size group actually and uh, you know so we can sort of interact together today um so as i was saying earlier um the thing about teaching is that generally speaking you know you've got to have a passion for it you've got to really um be fired up about it because it's not easy to put a course together um you know you you've really got to understand and think about where your passion and your expertise intersect now Remember what I, what I tell you about being the go-to expert in your field. So many people always say, oh, but Janie, I'm not an expert. You know, um, I'm, just a, I'm just a nutritionist. I'm just a reflexologist. I'm just a hijama cupping specialist. Um, Osman, I'm looking at you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the green goddess. I'm Jill Swires and I teach people how to do these incredible lifestyle things, you know. And the point is that, yes, you are the experts. You are the go-to experts because the whole point is that only you have your life experience that's got you to this particular point in your life. And so you bring all of this magic with you, you bring this fairy dust with you and you sprinkle it all over everything you do because it's your own flavor of what you're offering. So you are the go-to expert because nobody else has your life experience. So I want you to acknowledge that in yourself. I want you to treasure that part of yourself. It's really, really important that you really embrace this. The next thing I want you to think about is what is the transformation you provide? Please write this down. Um, I'm going to be asking you to write quite a lot in this session because this session is planned out to be 
uh, something where I want you to take notes and I do want you to take this away and work on it. Okay, it's gonna, there's gonna be homework. I won't be marking your homework, it's just for you, okay? But these are thinking points and talking points, self-talking points. When I was, I was speaking with Lynn Beckers today, hi Lynn, and, um, and Lynn said something brilliant about actually, you know, when you wanna get something off your chest or if you want really, really the best therapy is put your teddy on the end of the bed and tell everything to your teddy and you'll get the very best advice ever. But the point actually is, you know, setting up something whereby you can actually just get your stuff out, where you can discuss things and think, so, hey, Teddy, you know, what do you reckon on a course on blah, blah, blah? And of course, what that's going to do is it's going to get your subconscious moving and churning. And then of course, three o'clock in the morning, you'll sit bolt upright in bed and go, oh yeah, I have the answer to that now. So, you know, it, it's strange, isn't it? The way our minds work is very, very intriguing. So I really want you, please, if you can just write down now, where does my, where do my passion and expertise intersect? You might need to maybe do one of those two column things, maybe write passion at the top, and expertise at the top of the other column. And then just kind of make notes about, you know, what are your passions? You know, are you passionate about, don't say general things like I'm passionate about helping people. Well, I jolly well hope you are, or otherwise you wouldn't be a practitioner, would you? I'm assuming you are passionate about helping people. Hold on, I'm just gonna let Nikki in. Hello, my lovely Nikki. Good to see you, my love. Thank you for joining us. Okay, um, so, you know, I guess you've got this passion for helping people. So Nikki, what we're doing, just, just to catch you up, sweet, is we're doing um, a little bit of homework, which is where you write down, where do my passion and my expertise intersect? You're doing two columns, passion on one side, expertise on the other side. And you don't have to do it all now, maybe just take it, write it down, map it out and take it away for later, okay? But this is a really, really important exercise for you all to do because I want you to just go away. And I was just saying to everybody, Nikki, that, um, you know, don't just say I'm passionate about helping people. Don't be generic. I want you to get into specifics. I'm passionate about, um, let's say, I don't know, a particular essential oil. I'm passionate about, um, finding uh, the way that meridian lines intersect around the body. I'm passionate about, you know, this, this and this. You know, these are the sorts of things that I want you to write down, being really, really specific. And then where, your, where does your expertise come? Again, you know, your expertise isn't, oh, I'm, I'm really good at helping people. Well, yeah, I should blink and think so. You are a practitioner, are you not? So therefore, you know, I would assume <laughs> that your expertise is in helping people. But who do you help? Who is it that you that you really really feel passionate about? Who who's your what is your expertise in working with those particular people? Get these thoughts going, get these juices flowing, and of course you know where I'm coming to at the end. If you remember the ikigai, um, that that diagram, there's a beautiful four circle Venn diagram where you've got your passion, your expertise, your professionalism, and and so on. You know, but I just want you to do the two for the time being. Just create yourself a nice Venn diagram and figure out what's in the middle there, because if you can figure out where your passion and your expertise sort of intersect that is what you should be teaching. That's going to be your springboard into really thinking, actually, here's the thing. I reckon, I reckon I could build a course around this. And if you do, this course that you're building is going to be completely different from anything else out there. Because what I don't want for any of you is for any of you to be a me too course, okay? Please, please, please remember that nobody's gonna pay for Me Too courses. You've got to have something unique. If you've got something unique, then people are going to recognize that and they're going to want to sign up for it, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense, everybody? Are we clear on that so far? Excellent, thank you. Thank you for your thumbs up. If anything doesn't make sense, we've got a, we've got a small enough group to, for you to start asking questions in or asking for clarification if need be in the chat box and I can always, I'll, I'll notice it and come back to it. Okay, so the other thing that is going to help you to create an absolutely unique course is what is your why? So for example, the uh, resilience and positive psychology course, you know, the strap line is creating health through happiness. Um, 
the reason, why did I create that course? Well, I, I was very, very driven to create it and I created it surprisingly quickly. As you know, there are, there, there's so much work in that course. It is phenomenal and it's all fully referenced and it, I mean, it really is, there's a lot to it. Um, but I, I pushed it, I, I managed to bring it all together very, very quickly because, well, was, you know, re relatively quickly, um, because I was so passionate about it that it made sitting up and, and burning the midnight oil very, very easy for me because I realised, and I was looking at what the government was saying about depression being, you know, and, and the suicide rate massively increasing. And I thought, okay, fine. So on one hand, I've got a, an amazing bunch of practitioners, thousands and thousands of practitioners. And on the other hand, we've got this population over here that is suffering so badly. Let's push the two together and smush that, that together. And what do we come out with? Well, we've got to have happiness. We've got to have proven strategies for mental health and well-being, happiness, whole uh, you know for people being whole we've got to have lifestyle strategies we've got to find ways of patch packaging all this up so that i can equip practitioners to go out and not just help people but also to give you a course that you can actually take out and it gives you a new course that you can literally just launch and run with and so again it brings your income it gives you another string to your bow therapeutically it increases your income levels so that's why i was so driven to create that course for you so that was my why if you need to go back to simon sinek's uh, youtube video to go and rewatch that never harms to do so um it's all about coming back to why you got into complementary medicine in the first place again if you can go back and really think it through. Why did you get into this field in the first place? If again, brainstorm, write this down. Why did I get into complementary medicine in the first place? If you can write that down and brainstorm on that one as well, because again, it's going to really inform the kind of course that you develop, okay? Again, I'm, I don't want you going out there and being a cookie cutter course, just like everybody else, because if you do, it simply commoditizes things, doesn't it? It's just another reflexology course. It's just another nutrition course. It's just another raw vegan course. It's just another hijama cupping course. It's, you know, it's just another. And there's no point in being a me too. Honestly, there really, really isn't. It just isn't going to grow your school. It's just going to be a, eh, so what, you know, and then people will start comparison shopping and price shopping. And we don't want that, do we? We want people knowing, and we're going to come on to how we do this. We want people knowing why you are so different. We want people knowing what's unique about you and what's going to really um, give them what they are looking for. So how do we do that? Okay. So who's your target audience? That's what we've got to do. We've got to figure out who your student avatar is. It's just the same as doing the avatar work that we've done since the get go. OK, if you haven't done that work yet, go over to the YouTube channel and watch that video and work through it. Um, honestly, truly, for those of you who don't know, um, Everything that we teach you, we've been teaching you since the beginning of lockdown on Friday afternoons, is all content that was going to be in the CMA uh, practice development course. Uh, probably not this training, because obviously this would be on how to develop a course course. <laughs> OK, but, you know, everything that's over on the YouTube channel, um, we were going to launch a course, a paid course for everybody at the beginning, no, prior, prior to lockdown. And then lockdown happened and we thought, oh, blimey, we can't possibly do that. We can't possibly charge for a course that, you know, we, we've got the realistic situation where practitioners could be going out of business. And so we thought the only logical and only honourable thing we could do and ethical thing we could do was to give it away. So we did. And that's why we started doing these tutorials. Um, but the upshot was, and this is really interesting, and I was in a mastermind at the time and I was saying to the person leading the mastermind, you know, we've got this fantastic course, we've written it, it's about to launch, but my demographic are about to lose their livelihoods. And the person was saying, oh, don't worry, this business person was saying, oh, don't worry about that, it's another internet millionaire, um, multi-millionaire she is, and oh, don't worry about that, they'll pay for it, they'll pay for it, if it's worth having, they'll pay for it. And I was thinking, do you know what, actually, I don't think, I, it just doesn't sit right with me, it really doesn't, it just doesn't feel 
I was really interrogating my gut sensations and my gut feelings. And you know me, I'm always about never giving stuff away because you know if you give stuff away, it doesn't get valued and so on and so forth. Um, but in the end, I just felt so icky about charging for it that I just thought, no, no, no. This is one of those weird exceptions. It's one of those things out of left field. This is what we have to do. But you know what the upshot was? The CMA grew by 96% from March 2020 to December 2020, and we are still growing at between 85 to 90%. Every single week in, week out, we're getting between um, 15 to 30 new CMA members week in, week out. And it's because of the, we are so conspicuously supporting people. And I think, you know, that was a rationale for actually giving something away. But this was, you know, this was our why. And this was, you know, sort of a real deep understanding of who, who our audience is and what we needed to do for you at that particular time. So I hope that makes sense. And, you know, these sessions, yes, we, you know, we give these away, obviously, but we're not really in a way because what we're doing is we're providing massive membership benefits. You pay us membership fees. So we're actually not giving this away um, in a way we are providing with membership benefits. So, you know, we, we totally appreciate your support and, you know, honor the fact that you're with us. And, um, you know, we feel it's the very least we can do is to give you workable, amazing value for money. So I hope that's, you know, and, you know, sort of makes it understandable. So, um, slightly digressing, but I think it's important uh, so that you can understand why we are coming from where we're coming from. And when I talk about value and charging and fees and things like that, that we're going to come on to, why we need to really take a deep dive into that. So your student avatar, who are they? Um, I want you to just please make a note, just say, who is my student avatar? If you know how to do the avatar work, that's great. If, however, you would like an avatar form, we've got a worksheet for you. Contact my colleague, Megan. So it's megan at the-cma.org.uk. I'm going to pop it in here. Thank you, Alison. That's a really lovely thing to say. Alison just said, thank you so, so much for generosity, enthusiasm and inspiration. That's really lovely. Thank you so much. It's, well, it's, it's our privilege. Thank you. Uh, Marilyn said, is it, um, she's wondering if it's too late to sign up for tomorrow's course. No, it's not too late. Um, I will put a link in for you. Um, and it's actually on the CMA website as well. Um, let me put Megan's details in. Megan at the dash cma .org, whoops, dot uk. Okay, so if you want the avatar worksheet, contact our lovely Megan and she will make sure that you get that. Okay, and then the other thing I can do for you, I do believe, is I'm going to just pick up that link for you. So bear with me one sec. I'll just quickly go into that. Um, no, it's never too yet. I've, I've had people signing up on the actual same day that morning. So it happens all the time. It's so one thing you will learn if you start doing courses, um, something you'll learn very, very quickly is never, ever panic if your course doesn't seem to be selling because um, people always book up for everything at the very, very last minute. Um, let me just take that little bit out there and give you the correct. There you go. That's the, that's the link for the, the course. Um, so people always sign up for everything last minute because people don't really feel that they can plan ahead. So when you're launching your courses, don't panic if you find that people aren't signing up as quickly as you thought they would do. It does take a while for people to start to realize and recognize who you are and things like that. And if you've got, let's say a workshop coming up, honestly, people will be signing up the evening before, the day before literally that same day it does happen all the time so never ever worry about it okay that's just it wasn't on my notes but I felt because you asked the question I thought oh I better tell you okay yes oh Sandra says the avatar sheet was on a recent newsletter yes it was that's right um but I know that we've got some new people in in the room Sandra and they may not be signed up for the CMA or may not have been signed up for the CMA newsletter so that's a point everybody if you're not yet signed up for the CMA newsletter it's really 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 useful so please make sure you signed up for it it. but if you haven't got the old uh, I think it's a couple of weeks ago if you haven't got that one contact Megan and she will send it to you okay right um, so the next question is and I want you to write this down 
why would somebody come, and, and you're going to phrase all of these in the first person, because it's a very important sort of little bit of mental gymnastics. Why would somebody come to me rather than somebody else? Why would, why would my student, why would somebody come to me to do my course rather than somebody else? Okay. This is where we really have to get into the nitty gritty of how do we get the point across about what we're actually offering on our course, okay? This comes down to the language and the emotions that you are using when you write your course copy, okay? So if you write copy along the lines of um, Mary Smith, College of Aromatherapy. I teach aromatherapy. I've got a course starting on the 14th of July. It lasts for six weeks. And at the end of it, you'll have a qualification in aromatherapy. Well, I don't know about you, but that's not buttering my parsnips very much at all. So what do we do about that? It, it's got no personality, has it? It doesn't tell you anything. Who's Mary? Why should I train with Mary? She does, I, I'm, just, I'm just not buying Mary. I really am not. When you're running a course, it's just, and you're promoting a course, it's just the same as promoting your own practice. It's just the same. You've got to get your personality across because your personality is what will help people make the buying decision over and above somebody else just down the road who's also offering a nutrition or reflexology or, or whatever course it is, it doesn't matter what the course is, but you've got to put your personality on the page, which is why, you know, when, when I talk about how to set up your, your website and yeah, there's a video, <laughs> there's a video on that as well. Um, and it's a good one. <laughs> they're all good. They're all good. Um, but yeah, honestly, if you go and have a little look at that, you remember, I talk about putting video of yourself or above the fold. So remember the old newspapers used to be sold, folded up, you'd come out of, this, out of the station, you have your man selling the newspapers going, evening standard, evening standard, and the newspapers all be folded up and all piled up. And of course, the, sorry, that the, the headline would always be that the most important uh, story, the thing that's gonna sell the newspaper is always, above the fold, because if it's under the fold, you can't see it when it's lying flat on the newsstand. So it's the same with websites and people will argue with, about this and saying, oh no, you know, people are happy to scroll, people are happy to scroll down. I don't agree, I really, really don't agree. I think if you don't have a site, um, and don't forget most people access everything via their mobile phones nowadays or their devices, if you don't have your personality front and center coming up right immediately where people can see it and you're able because of the, the medium of video, tell them about what you're offering, you're going to lose them. Video is the most important com component in growing your business. It truly, truly is. If you're worried about video and you know you, we're doing those CMA members showcase videos uh, if you're if you're a video virgin or you're just really uncomfortable with doing video, jump on a call with me. OK, we will do the interview and then you can give that to somebody and they will cut out my questions. They'll cut me out of video. They'll cut out my questions. And so you'll be there saying, well, this is the what this is what I do with people. This is the work I do. This is how I help people. These are the kinds of people I teach. This is what I teach. This is the value of what I teach. This is how I go about doing it. And because and, you know, this is it's fantastic. These videos, these showcase videos that we make for CMA members are brilliant. We put them on the YouTube channel. We give you a copy to do with as you please. By all means, put it on your website. You can cut me out if you want to. I don't care. Just whatever you've got to do to get your message across. And please, please, please put it front and center right at the top of your website. If you've got video there telling people what you do as a practitioner and what you do as a trainer, that's absolutely brilliant because that's the way you will sell, especially if you're passionate and excited 
about whatever it is that you're offering out there. You've got to get passion into it. You've got to get emotion into it because the point is we make buying decisions on emotion. Very few people are dispassionate about making a buying decision. Even when it comes to really boring things like washing machines or washing powder, there's still something in the back of our minds that dictates why we buy this particular brand over that particular brand. And it's based on emotion. It's not based on pure cold logic. We are strange creatures, us human beings. So does this all make sense so far? Is everybody happy so far? We've still got quite a lot of uh, questions to tackle and, and so on. Give me a quick show of thumbs. I'll just have a quick scroll along. Everybody's good. Excellent, lovely, fabulous, good stuff. Excellent, love it. Good, okay, fantastic, good. So what I want you to do is, again, that's that question, why would somebody come to me rather than somebody else? That's a really important question because you know that's where you're going to drill down to your, yourself, to your nitty gritty. Again, your passion and expertise, they're going to come to you because you've got this fantastic expertise that is driven through years and years and years of your journey, why you got into complementary medicine in the first place, what has driven you to be this incredible practitioner that you are, and that that now parlays into you taking this work out because you know that you can teach it. And this is what you're teaching and this is why you're teaching it. And this is what will sell. This is what will help somebody make the, the call between training with you and training with somebody else. Now, another convincer is make sure you've got your CMA logo on your website in a really conspicuous place and link it through to the CMA website because that will help your SEO, your search engine optimization. And of course, we link back to you as well, as you know, again, that pulls you up through the search engine rankings. But one of the big buying decisions and um, one of the things that convinces people to make buying decisions are these badges. Things like the good housekeeping seal of approval, you know, your CMA logo on your website. People look at a badge and they go, oh, that's a person that's bothered to get their qualifications. So make sure you've, you're showing your, lab, your, your logo. Also, another thing that we have tracked, don't forget, we've been at this for 30 years, very, very close. We're 28 years into this. Um, and I've been a practitioner for well over three decades. But we know that colleges who really, really brag about their CMA membership do better than colleges who don't because students make buying decisions again on who you are affiliated with. If you've bothered to get yourself affiliated with, in our case, the world's leading organization, then that speaks volumes to students. And then, as you know, you know your, your students can become CMA members whilst they're still studying. And then, of course, when they've graduated from your training, they can then apply to become members of the CMA. So students like that. They really see it as being good value because it shows that you've gone the extra mile to make sure you are affiliated with the best of the best. So that's why you've got to brag about your CMA membership. Now, the next thing you've got to have, again, really, if you can get this above the fold, please, please do. You need student testimonials. Now, your written testimonials are great if you can put them on a little slider that goes across the screen. So you've got lots and lots of testimonials. Even if the person doesn't read every single word, it doesn't matter because the point is, what the, the message that's going through to the brain is that this school or this practitioner, this, but we're here to talk about teaching, this school has got all of these students and they're all saying these wonderful things about this particular person. That will make a buying decision happen because they're going, oh, wow, social proof. As you know from the videos that we've done on testimonials, which are very good and are over on the, <laughs> the Complementary Medical Association YouTube channel. I sound like a broken record, don't I? I do apologize. Um, but yeah, if you want to look at uh, how to get testimonials, it's very, very important. If you can get student testimonials, you know from that video that people, your prospective students are 92% more likely to trust a testimonial from somebody just like them, a fellow student, 
than anything that you say on your website. So your video is important because they, they, it gives them a chance to get to know you, know you're a real person. You're not some faceless entity that you can't really relate to. But they're also then seeing testimonials from students who are people just like them. OK, even better if you can get video testimonials. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That is the next thing that you've also got to try to get up as high as you can on your website. If you can get student testimonials, you are absolutely golden because, again, those speak volumes and they push buying decisions. That's what makes buying decisions happen. So honestly, truly, you could just put, you know, the, the telephone directory on your website. If, you know, if you're thinking, well, I'm just going to say, you know, I teach, I teach aromatherapy and, um, and that's sort of pretty much it. Aromatherapy is the science of, of rubbing nice smelling oils onto people, blah, 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 blah. You know, I, nobody's going to look at that. Nobody's going to find that trustworthy. Nobody's going to think that that is actually in any way speaking to them. You've got to get the emotion of what you're doing across. And the emotion comes from looking at why did I get into complementary medicine in the first place? So it's going back to that question. If you can go back to your, your, your why, that's what's going to really get those creative juices flowing. And it's going to be, it's going to really write your copy for you. Also, the other thing it's going to write your, your training copy is what do your students or your patients say about you? That's also going to write your copy. Let me have a little look. Uh, where are we? I'm going to make sure. I'm not missing any questions. Um, Sonia says, if you've never run a course, there won't be any testimonials. What can I do exactly? I would use, um, I would use your, your client testimonials because it still illustrates that you work with people. And it, you know, quite honestly, this is the thing, it's what I'm saying. The funny thing about on screen is that people do not read words on a screen. It's the strangest thing. But what people do is they go on impressions. And so by having testimonials running across your screen, if you've got them, use them. If you've got them running across the screen, what it does is it shows the person that you've been really successful at working with people. And then you can say, you know, welcome, this is my first training course. I've had so much success with my clients. I am now passionate about taking this out into the world and teaching it. And this is what I'm intending to do. And there's no shame in never having taught anything. It doesn't matter. The point is that if you're enthused enough about it, then that's going to, that's going to do the selling for you. If you believe in what you're, you're teaching, I mean, with my resilience and positive psychology training, I had never taught it before. I had to teach it for the first time. And obviously I thought, is anybody actually going to want to sign up for this? I had 60 people sign up that first time. You know, it, it's because it's you believe in it because you, you totally 100% absolutely on the money know that what you're doing is needed. And, and, and this is, will, will come from doing these questions. And I've got more questions for you. Let me look at another question. I hope that makes sense, Sonia. So again, you know, please don't worry. We all have to start somewhere. Marilyn says, hi, Janie. I'm very interested in tomorrow's course. However, I think I need to upgrade my membership with you to practitioner as I have a free membership with Ali and also Richard Knight. Brilliant. Yeah, by the way, so Ali Campbell and Richard Knight are CMA college members, training school members, and they actually give their students their first month CMA membership free, which is really lovely. It doesn't cost them much um, because it's only student memberships, only five pounds 17 a month. So it's not them giving away a huge amount of money of monetary value, but my goodness, um, I don't know if you will vouch for that, Marilyn, but wasn't it a lovely thing to have to see, wow, I'm signing up for this course with these guys and they're actually standing me my first month CMA membership, wow. That's amazing. I'd love to know your experience of that because we think it works really well. So um, yes, let's have a little look. Okay, yes, yes, that's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, you're, you're fine to do that. Do go ahead, just get signed up and we'll sort it out. But that's absolutely fine because my assumption is you're a student member with them. My assumption is you'll be upgrading to practitioner member afterwards anyway. So um, yes, go, go for it. Go take, we have to let you know everybody, we have a, 
really, really hugely discounted CMA members price for the course. And then we have a higher price for the general, general practitioners out there who are not yet CMA members, because we all obviously want to build in, you know, massive value for membership benefits for CMA members, of course. Okay, that's great. Um, so Sonia says, thank you. Yeah, great. So I'm, I'm glad I answered your question, Sonia. Yes. Yeah, so Marilyn, coming back to you. Yes, go for it, lovely. That's absolutely fine. Just get yourself signed up. That's great. Okay, so my next questions are, um, right. So, how are you demonstrating your expertise? Um, right, again, so it's really about the emotion that you provoke. And again, the sorts of testimonials that you have. Um, then, as I say, badges, have you got any badges? Yes, you're a CMA member, you've got your, your CMA, your registered badge uh, logo, our registered trademark. Um, but have you got anything else that also demonstrates your expertise? So for example, on, on my website, uh, the, the janiegoddard.com website or my um, resilience and anti-aging and uh, all my my burned out ladies that I look after and, and autoimmune people I look after, my, my geeky specialities. Um, my sort of, if you like, my convincers are things like BBC, The Times, Daily Mail, blah, 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 blah. All of the media things that I contribute to on a regular basis, I put their logos on my site. So again, these are messengers, me mes mes messenger messages, <laughs> messengers, messengers, messages uh, that actually demonstrate, wow, you know, this person, they've got a bit of credibility there, haven't they? Ooh, okay, that's interesting. Um, wow, yeah, okay. So, you know, they, they've done, if you haven't got any of that, it doesn't matter, but you will. If you do what I've told you about um, Haro, H-A-R-O dot com, uh, where the, it's all of those uh, reporters who are, and journalists who are looking for um, expert comment Haro, help a reporter out is what it stands for. Go to haro.com, get yourself signed up, and then you will find that you will be name checked in all these media. You can then use those logos to build up your credibility slider, okay? It's not difficult. It's not difficult, honestly. Give me a show of hands. Has anybody actually, is anybody using uh, things like third party logos on their websites? Let me come back to you because obviously I can't see. Yeah, 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 brilliant. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Some of you are, um, if you haven't yet got those third party website things, um, then, you know, logos and whatnot, then, um, you know, it, it's easy enough to get them. It truly, truly is please go to haro.com, please start contributing to other media so that you can actually make sure you get yourselves, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, credit, it's all about credibility. It sounds silly, doesn't it? But we are weird human creatures and we make really weird buying decisions based on all sorts of emotions and credibility is one of them. Okay, so great. Yes, Nikki, I know you do. Absolutely, that's fantastic. Alison, oh my goodness, Alison. Get going. I know you. Need, I know you can, and I know you will. Okay, that's great. Sonia says yes. Okay, fabulous. Great stuff. Right um, now. Okay, uh, lovely. Uh, la 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 la. Um, are, is there anybody else um, coming back to this question? Just before we navigate away from how else are you demonstrating your expertise? Have you ever done anything along the lines of any volunteering? Have you ever done, let's say, a taster day or an experience day? You know, sometimes you get those lovely experience days for carers uh, where you'll go and do a you know, free treatment session for carers or for you know, underprivileged groups or what have you. If you've got any of those sorts of things that you've ever done, you can use those, you know, use those logos. I've worked with these people. I was speaking again, you know, Lynn, when, when I was doing Lynn's uh, post resilience course mentoring session today, Lynn came up with a couple of organizations that she's identified uh, where she can go in and do some, some uh, positive psychology and, and, and so on training. And I thought that's brilliant because it's going to give her all that credit ability that's going to springboard her into other sectors so it's really fascinating so yeah you know do, do try that let's have a little look uh, Sam says what is the name of that website for media haro.com okay thanks Lynn haro.com yeah appreciate it okay now 
Um, oh, Jill just says, thank you, Jenny. I have to leave early today. Oh, I'm so sorry. Friends funeral. So, so sorry. Okay, Jill. Yes, I know you're always here week in, week out. Um, I really, truly hope that goes as okay as it possibly can. I'll see you soon for sure. Yep. So haro.com, go to the website, you, you click uh, whichever categories are the categories that you have expertise in. So in our case, obviously health and well-being. You will then start to get um, emails through from haro.com and it will say this particular um, reporter is looking for a commentary, expert commentary on toddler taming uh, or um, how to deal with hay fever or um, you know how to deal with um, depression or whatever you know it's it's really 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 interesting so many different inquiries coming through they won't all be right for you but you know what there will be some so make the effort you make sure you are sending everything through read the inquiry very very carefully do not waste a reporter's time but make sure you answer exactly what they want to know and make sure you're giving them the exact information they are requesting from you so that they know they can come back to you. You'll become their, their go-to expert and they'll be coming to you direct in the future and you will be name-checked and name-checked and name-checked in that media and you will start to massively build your profile. This is what the lovely Rebecca Lockwood did and that grew her mailing list like bilio. It was amazing for her, okay? So remember, little acorns, Haro is your go-to place. All right, loves, uh, let's just check. Okay, lovely. Um, ah, it's actually H-A-R-O. Let me go, let me just pop it here again because we've scrolled forward a wee bit. H-A-R-O dot com, okay? There you go, that's what it is. All right, lovely. Now, next things we're going to talk about are very, very simple and very straightforward. Fees, okay, it's not a dirty word. Um, how are you structuring your payments? One-off staged payments, how will you follow those up? Um, if you're you know, getting staged payments, one of the best things that I can suggest is there are lots and lots of different types of teaching platforms we happen to use Teachable because it suits our particular teaching model. Um, but one of the ones that I think is really good is called um, Member Vault. Because you can use this to also build up little sort of membership groups as well. Member Vault, I believe it's .com. The people that run Member Vault are incredibly approachable and you can upload your courses. There's no limit, as I understand it, to the number of courses that you upload. They do not take a commission on your courses. You just pay a membership fee to them. Um, they're really, really nice people. I'm actually very seriously considering moving to Member Vault. So I really recommend them and they are, they're super, super, super. So I think you need to go and take a look at them if you're looking at launching courses um, because they will handle all of the payments. They take the money, the person pays online, they take the money, they pay it into your account. And if you want to do staged payments, you can do all of that. You can set it all up with them and they have ways of chasing it to save you the hassle. So if somebody's payment doesn't go through, it doesn't matter, you don't need to worry about it, they get an autoresponder message saying, oi, your payment has your third payment hasn't come through. So that would be my best advice to you for that. Okay. Um, now, let's have a little look. These are called, those platforms are called Learning Management Systems, LMS for short. The big ones are Kajabi and Teachable. They are very complex. The learning curve is really steep. Um, honestly, I am seriously techie and Teachable took me some time to really understand how all of their backend messaging goes. And oh, you honestly, it's, it's a hassle. It really is. I would really go for Member Vault. It's much, much more straightforward, more user friendly, and you can speak to real people. That's, that's so, so again, go for your LMS. The next thing, my next piece of advice is what can you bundle? What can you upsell? So when you, when you create a course, 
I want you to think in life in terms of life, lifetime value of that client, which means that you don't have to charge an absolute arm and a leg for a course. You don't have to be greedy. You know, I want you to make sure you understand the value of what you're offering. Go and watch my, vi my video on setting your fees and understanding your value. Very important. Um, but, you know, what you can do is you can bundle things together. So let's say you've got a course on... Um, sports, um, let's say sports therapy, something like that to do with sports. Well, you might then also want to create a course on nutrition, for example. Why don't you bundle the two together so that the person, because they do go naturally together, don't they? So that the person is actually thinking, well, if I do that course, I can also get that course at a reduced fee. Because with a bundle, what you'll say is, you know, there's this course for 500 pounds and there's this course for 500 pounds sold separately but buy them both in a bundle and you get them both for 350 each so you're offering a really substantial discount but overall you're making far more money I mean that's just, those are silly examples and, and those are just just to make the maths easy I'm not recommending that you charge that or you would discount to that extent because that would be a ridiculously huge discount but you see what I'm saying you will sell more product more courses by doing bundles carefully. Okay, uh, right, just a second, so I'm going to put Member Vault in. I believe, don't quote me on this, but it's, I believe it's .com, but just go into Google and put in Member Vault and you will actually find it. Okay, as I say, they're lovely people. I really like them. I'm not on commission, um, so don't even worry about saying Janie sent me because it doesn't matter. Tell them if you want because and say Janie says she might be joining. <laughs> so that's fine. But I'm not on a commission. You know me. I don't I, I don't get into all that sort of nonsense. Um, now, the next thing, though, to, to think about is um, aside from upsells, you know, are there other things that you can offer? Is there equipment, for example? So, for example, if you were teaching something like, say, sports massage, um, if you were teaching sports massage online to people who'd never done any kind of massage, my feeling is you should be teaching the theory online, but if you're teaching hands-on work of any description, you need to have ways of delivering the hands-on training. That is crucial. You can't teach somebody massage online. So you've got to maybe think about, well, you've got this section, but then maybe an upsell is the, or, you know, adding an added value thing is the, the hands-on training. So you can, you know, play around with ideas like that. Um, so to always think about, you know, where is, where am I taking my student? What's my student's journey? Am I then bringing them back to, teach, to, do, to do another course? So for example, with the Resilience and Positive Psychology course, um, the course I was then going to offer was Resilience and Positive Psychology for Teens. And it was very, very well, it was very popular. It was very well received when I announced that. But then of course, my beloved Roberta became unwell. And then of course we had to go on the recruitment treadmill and all of that stuff. So I wasn't able to put that course together, but I, that's the next plan. So everybody who's done that course is then going to be offered the, 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 the teens version because you know the teenage neurology and the neurotransmitters in the teenage brain everything is different in a teenage adolescent brain so the whole course needs to be reshaped for working with teens so you see what I mean it's another thing and I know many 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 people who've done the course already will come back and do the teen course so I've got a I've got a student pathway so I want you to think that through because it's not a one hit wonder, just somebody coming along and doing a course. I want you to think about in terms of pathways, okay? Um, and then you've got to think about, you know, what happens with your students? Are you going to encourage them to join the CMA when they're studying? Well, yes, I hope you do. Are you going to maybe give them their first month's CMA student membership? It's only £5.17p. So yeah, why not? It's, it makes you look really, really generous. Um, so, so, you know, why wouldn't you? It's worked brilliantly for Ali Campbell and also for Richard, you know. So yeah, you know, these things work. Um, you've also got to think about, you know, um, what you're going to do as far as clinic hours and supervision, you know, the real practicalities of delivering your course. Are you going to do your clinic hours? Do your people need supervision? Are they going to need that while they're still studying? If so, if, if you've got client, your, your students out there doing 
uh, working on people while they're still studying to get case studies together, um, then you're go they're going to need insurance. Where are you going to send them for insurance? Obviously our advice would be Westminster because they are super, super efficient and we love them. And they'll turn that around very quickly and very inexpensively. So think about all of those sorts of things. Those would be my, my, my core advice to you. So let's just have a quick look at, uh, uh, Yes, Lynn says there's an 83% rise in suicide in girls from the ages of 10 to 24. I know that's one of the reasons why. And um, when I come back from, I'm away next week, I'm having a break next week, everybody. So you won't be able to get hold of me, which is why I'm saying speak to the ladies in the office. It's, it's everybody at, so Megan at, Lauren at, Julia at the-cma.org.uk. You know, you, you know my address. It's, it's their name instead of my name. That's how you get hold of the, the ladies in the office. <coughs> excuse me um so yes exactly lynn with that horrifying statistic um you know this is why we've got to do the, the the teen version of the resilience and positive psychology training and that's why i want to equip you guys and give you a course that you then take out there and you can work with people who are at risk so that's what we're talking about this isn't just a nice fluffy course it's all underpinned by all of the evidence it's it, it holds water, it's really evidence, it's hardcore, it's evidence-based. So um, that's that. Do we have any further questions? Because I don't want to keep you too long today. Thank you for being with me and, and holding holding the, the faith, keeping the faith. Um, has this been useful? Are there any more questions? Uh, is there anything that I haven't covered that you would like me to cover? Um, if not, are we good to go? Okay, we, there's no tutorial next week, as I say, I'm off. I'm taking a very, very much needed break, which is great, and I'm very excited about it. Janet says, um, I would definitely be interested in the teens' work. Yes, she said, I work very uh, part-time, all oh, the messages are shooting up, work part-time in a further education college, and many students have been struggling. I know they have, yes, yes. So I'll make sure everybody knows about that, Janet. Thank you, my love. Marilyn says, very interesting. Thank you so much. Sam says, thank you. Alison says, thank you so much. And Natasha says, thank you so much. See you tomorrow. Yay. <laughs> yes, can't wait. It's going to be a lovely session. We've got a great group of people. Um, Sonny says, thank you so much. Tony says, thanks, Jenny. Really useful. Enjoy our during my time off. I certainly will, Tony. Absolutely. Yes. Um, thank you so much, everybody. You are flipping amazing, as, as always. I just want to thank you because, as always, I just want to underline and underpin how amazing you are, how blown away we are constantly by the brilliance of and, and support of everything you put out there, the people that you're looking after. We hear about you. We have people contacting us and say, oh, I'm seeing a CMA practitioner. They're amazing. They're brilliant. They've really helped me. You know, we get, we hear, we, we hear what's going on with you guys. And honestly, you are amazing. And just please keep on keeping on because you're making a massive difference out there to the health of the nation. So I want to give you all a great big hug, big kiss. Mwah. Love you all. Take care. Bye. See you next, not next week, the week after next. Bye.